These days, everybody is talking about artificial intelligence. It's a very exciting topic and one believed to be very relevant for society. AI matters. But why is this actually the case? To understand this better, let's first look at human intelligence. Human intelligence involves learning, reasoning, and a host of other capabilities. Artificial intelligence involves machine learning, automated reasoning, and other techniques. But to truly understand why AI is such a big deal, it's best to think of it as an approach for automating computer programming. Computer programming, of course, is a tedious, complex, and error-prone task for humans. At the same time, computer programs control large parts of our reality and of our lives. In fact, the impact of computer programs on modern society can hardly be overestimated. And automating parts of the programming task obviously is going to have a big impact. And that's why AI will change everything. That's why AI is the key to better science, better engineering, better public administration, and indeed to solving the grand problems of our time. And that includes climate change, pandemics such as the present one, inequity, and many others. In a word, AI is key to the future of Europe. But you may ask, what will this future look like? And here, I'd like to take you through three possible scenarios. The first of those is where European AI is a distant third to its American and Chinese counterparts. Here, we have a large gap in technology and research capability, strong dependency on technology designed and run elsewhere. Top talent is mostly displaced from Europe or working remotely for global technology leaders anchored outside of Europe. And European subsidiaries of these companies mostly focus on compliance with European Union rules and regulations. That is not a desirable scenario, but how do we get to that scenario? Well, we get there by doing business as usual, by continuing to fund the development of AI in Europe through the usual mechanisms, including Digital Europe and Horizons Europe, and that will bring us into a situation where the successes that of course we will achieve in that way too, will mostly benefit non-European entities through brain drain and acquisition. Unfortunately, we've seen quite a bit of that of late. In this scenario, most of our data may be processed in Europe, for example, because it's regulated to happen that way, but we'll still end up using and fueling technologies made elsewhere. We will live with highly asymmetrical data sharing arrangements that are not to the benefit of Europe and its citizens. In this world, investment made by European companies in public and the public sector to deploy and leverage AI capabilities will end up mostly benefiting companies and economies outside of Europe. Clearly, we don't want to live in that world. Can we do better? Evidently. For example, we could create a scenario that we might call niches and specialties. And in this scenario, we are still broadly speaking a distant third behind the US and China in terms of European AI capabilities, but there will be islands of European excellence. These tend to be small and highly specialized, but profitable. Unfortunately, the economic benefits from these highly specialized islands of excellence will be very uneven and largely speaking outweighed by a broad dependence on technology made elsewhere across all sectors. How do we end up in this scenario? Well, that's where we get when we do what might seem natural, namely focus European investments in AI, mostly on areas of existing strength and specialization, such as the automotive sector. In this case, the investment made by European companies in the public sector to deploy and leverage AI capabilities will mostly benefit Europe, 
but this will still be offset by a, by a high cost of technology developed elsewhere that is needed in practically all sectors outside of these niches. This also is not the most attractive scenario and therefore let's turn to the world that we really want to live in, a world in which Europe has global leadership, in which Europe is a global leader in AI and the global leader in human-centric, trustworthy AI. In this scenario, AI research and techno technological capabilities in Europe are comparable to those in the United States and China, while Europe has clear leadership in human-centric, trustworthy AI. Here, Europe will also lead a global coalition that is strongly committed to AI for good and AI for all. Here, Europe is equally attractive to top talent, to the US and to China. How do we get into this rather desirable scenario? This requires a very substantial investment, a broad, large-scale investment through novel instruments and programs in addition to the existing ones. Doing this, we can achieve world-class European capabilities in all crucial technologies that fall under the AI umbrella, and we can be world-leading in about 30 to 50 percent of these with reasonable effort. Here, most of our data is processed in Europe, but also using and fueling technologies made in Europe. And data sharing will happen on a fairly level playing field. How can and should we invest into this notion of AI made in Europe? There are five investments that I believe are critically necessary. The first of these is an innovation booster program for spin-offs, startups, and scale-ups to make sure that innovations in AI are developed in Europe, stay in Europe for the benefit of Europeans and the world. Secondly, we need an AI infrastructure sovereignty program that will ensure that everywhere we will have the infrastructure needed to do world-class AI research and innovation. Thirdly, we need excellent grants in AI to keep the best and brightest talents in Europe or attract them back to Europe. This should be modeled after the highly successful ERC grant scheme. Fourth, we need a small but significant number of regional AI excellent hubs throughout Europe. These should likely be specialized on broad sectors of AI applications and establish excellence and impact in those areas, be focal points of regional activities. Last but not least, to tie it all together, we need a European Lighthouse Center for AI, a CERN for AI. And I'd like to spend the rest of this presentation talking about this in some more detail. Humans have always had special places. They've learned to create special places. And some of these special places have become global attractors for talent. Here you see two prominent examples. On the left, CERN, one of the biggest European success stories and research. And on the right, Apple Park, which of course represents global technological leadership. We should create another special place like this, another magnet for talent. We should create a European Lighthouse Center for AI, a center that's driving science and innovation in the broad field of AI, a global beacon for European excellence in AI that aims for the impact and recognition of CERN, ESA, and Airbus, all big globally recognized success stories originating and anchored firmly in Europe. A European Lighthouse Center for AI will become a global attractor for talent and expertise, the place to be for the best and brightest AI researchers and innovators across the globe. It will also be a hub and driver in a pan-European network of research and innovation centers in AI, something that ties together 
the diversity and breadth that is European AI. What will be done there? Well, obviously, globally leading research across all areas of AI. But further, coordinated missions to solve European and global grand challenges in areas such as health, energy, environment, transportation, and others. This will help to tackle pandemics, climate change, food production, and many other challenges that we are facing as societies in Europe and around the world. Further, projects and knowledge sharing involving all EU member states and associated countries with benefits broadly across all of Europe. And finally, this will provide coordination for a strong and diverse network of national and regional excellence centers in AI. What should be located there to make it such a success? Three things. Number one, a European data center and core compute facility that aims to be the number one compute capability in the world. Number two, the European Office for AI and Data Ethics and Compliance that sets an EC standard for ethical, trustworthy and human-centered AI, the kind of AI that we want across Europe and far beyond. Third, world-class experimentation and testing facilities, working and meeting staff spaces and the world's best support staff. Why should all of this be concentrated in a single location. In a nutshell, to achieve critical mass, critical density of talented people and important activities, a place that's abuzz with activities and people, a place that at any time of the day, at any time of the year, something interesting is going on and interesting people can be found. This will create a unifying element, a common reference for a diverse network spanning all of Europe and a symbol for Europe European ambition and excellence in AI. And symbols don't work well when they're distributed. It will also facilitate efficient use of support staff and specific expertise and create lots of synergy from having scientists, support staff, data, compute power, regulator, and other components of the AI ecosystems all focused in one place. But you may ask, won't it be impossible to pick a location for such a lighthouse center? And the answer to this is absolutely not. Many examples illustrate how a central location has been found and can be found. These include CERN, Brussels as the de facto EU capital, with a very high concentration of EU institutions, national capitals, the European Central Bank, and many others. In this specific case, we can simplify the choice of place by design, by deciding that this facility should have no permanent scientific staff, but instead host excellent scientists for periods of time ranging from weeks to years. And that way, we can ensure that coveted and much needed top talent in AI across Europe will not be permanently displaced from where it is needed most in the regions. And finally, we can base the choice of location at least to good part on rational criteria designed to ensure its success. What does a lighthouse achieve? Well, obviously, it will make a major contribution to global technology leadership for Europe, in an area whose impact can hardly be overestimated, and that is AI. Also technological sovereignty, which is quickly becoming of crucial importance in a globalized and highly competitive global environment. Furthermore, it will give us increased ability to address Europe's significant challenges, including sustainable growth, climate change, health, and others. And finally, it will help us achieve AI-driven economic growth and scientific acceleration across all member states and radiating out into associated countries and beyond. 
the future truly can be Europe and should be Europe. Europe can become a leader in human-centered, trustworthy AI. But we need to act boldly, decisively. We need to act now. There are many examples of global successes made in Europe. Amongst the most prominent, we find CERN, the European Space Agency, and Airbus. These are widely respected and recognized across the world. Big success stories such as these don't just happen. They are willed into existence. And it does take indeed very significant political will. It does take buy-in across all stakeholders and buy-in from the general public. But that can all be achieved. It's a matter of will. So let's build the ultimate AI research hub, the global attractor. Let's give a home to trustworthy, human-centered AI made in Europe. Thank you very much for your attention.